In the 90s, Suriname just surpassed a civil war. Economic reserves were gone, and the government was in desperate need of foreign currency. By handing out wood concessions to the Indonesian logging companies, the government wanted to generate the necessary funds. The 1995 Backs to the Wall report painted a picture of what would happen to the country economically, socially, and environmentally if the government would proceed. The key messages coming out of Backs to the Wall were that this kind of logging activity had already taken place in many other parts of the world. Conservation International, together with others, prevented a devastating future for Suriname by convincing the Surinamese government of the benefits of establishing a nature reserve at a time the world was not environmentally conscious. Suriname eventually made world press when the Central Suriname Nature Reserve of 6,178 square miles encompassing 11% of Suriname's surface was announced in 1998. The value of Suriname's forest estate is only going to continue to increase, especially if you look uh, at, at Red Plus, which has been called avoided deforestation in the past, the importance of maintaining intact forest uh, uh, systems as a way of helping to mitigate uh, climate change. At the moment, Suriname has nature reserves and management areas in many areas across the country. Suriname continues to have 94% rainforest coverage, but preserving this greenest country on Earth status with only 500,000 people on 63,000 square miles of land is a huge challenge. Because how do we monitor these protected areas with only a handful of wardens? How do we monitor what happens in our mostly dense inhabited forest with open borders? 2014, Conservation International Suriname initiated a three-step model for high-tech nature monitoring. Firstly, the open source software of Global Forest Watch is addressed to access current data on the status quo of the forest in the country. Secondly, conservation drones are used as a tool for low altitude remote sensing of the forest. A conservation drone will check any changes that appeared in the satellite images. We nemen directeur van Landsbosbeheer en met de minister van RGB hebben we afspraken gemaakt dat we zouden beginnen een aantal van die vliegtuigjes in te kopen, de jachtopzieners te trainen in het gebruik ervan en vervolgens ze te helpen om een monitoringsplan te maken. Both game wardens and local population are trained to pilot the drones in remote areas. Ja, de drone uh, kan gebruikt worden voor uh, verschillende doeleinden. Maar ik denk uh, specifiek voor um, camera mapping. Dus uh, als je ergens een gebied wil verkennen op die kilometer afstand, dan kan je die drone uh, heel goed daarvoor te gebruiken. Uh, is hij heel goed te gebruiken daarvoor. The third step in the process is to have on the ground verifications of the situation and if needed appropriate interventions. To contribute to sustainable livelihoods of the local people, Conservation International Suriname is investing in training local people to be employed as drone pilots and park rangers to assist in the field program. The owners, in the first instance, the people have been here for a long time. They have to be involved in the field and have to be able to make a bit of bread. For example, the Quinty tribe in the Central Nature Reserve are piloting the drones in their area. Due to the construction of a road in their area, they will soon be easily accessible by the outside world. The conservation drones will help them monitor their habitats from harmful intruders. Also in other parts of Suriname, local indigenous peoples are trained to act as park rangers to support the overall nature management of the country, both earning an income to sustain their livelihoods and actively contributing to preserving nature as is. We have now the first two drones overhandigd. We gaan door met trainen en we hopen natuurlijk de vloot ook uit te breiden. Met twee vliegtuigjes kan je er natuurlijk niet met 14,8 miljoen hectare bos. Maar het is wel een mooi begin. Als Conservation International blijven we natuurlijk erop hameren dat ontwikkeling en natuurbehoud hand in hand kunnen gaan. Maar een van de dingen die daarbij wel heel belangrijk is, is dat je effectief beheer voert over je natuurgebieden. En dit is een voorbeeld van hoe Conservation International helpt om bij te dragen aan het versterken van de beheerscapaciteit van Suriname. 